<laughs> I've pretty much completed all the work, the construction of the boat, except for fastening this one piece of cap down. It's all fit. I've got it clamped right in position. I'm going to drill it while it's in position, except the last couple holes. And I'll show you why I'm not going to drill those two holes right there. Well, this is the scarf right in here. You know, it's 13 inches long, like we said before. And I want this scarf to be butted right against this piece and make this joint look really, really nice. So it's pretty easy to make a mistake here for anybody because one mistake people would make would be they would put this piece down in position and maybe clamp it on both ends. But if it's up anywhere off there when you drill it, the problem becomes that you know, you've got this end low, uh, you've got the other end low, but it's up in the middle. So if you fit to fasten it on each end or anything like that, then when you fasten this, the middle just keeps popping up and you can't get it down. As soon as you push it down with clamps, this opens up. So it's really, really important if you want this to come out nice that you use this little trick. And what I'm going to do is the first two screws that I'm going to put in are going to be put on an angle like that. And uh, there's certainly a reason for it. Uh, they're not only going to be put on an angle, there's going to be a spacer in between them first, maybe an eighth of an inch thick or maybe even a little bit more. So when I drill them on this angle, it's going to lap over that space or skip that space, you might say, and the two holes won't line up with each other like they would if I drilled straight down. Then I can pull the spacer out and screw it down. As you tighten it, it slides forward which is very easy for it because everything in between there is incredibly slippery. I just don't clamp this tight or this end tight at all near the scarf until I pull it up tight on the end and then I'm just going to clamp this you know, so I don't have to drill right through it until it's glued with plugs. You know, it's kind of very similar to how they uh, nail tongue and groove flooring because a lot of times if they're trying to get it tight, they'll tip the flooring up like that and then nail it. And what it does is it drives it over. Same principle right here. Before I get drilling, I want to introduce you to some new people on our Patreon board. First, we've got Thomas Kelly. Then we've got Lee Farenholt, Bill Hardis, Killian Murphy, Nick Huffman, Matt Hood, Jeffrey Reynolds, David Elves, Peter von der Porten, Simon Frusha, and Andrew McManus. Now on the starboard side here, we've got Christian Mele, Noel Costantino, Biff Bird, Matt Blaze, and Richard Mays, Patrick Collins, Andrew Modine, Paca Stiena. Now here's one right here. We don't know who this is, but he sent the money in and we put him on the board. It's E-O-H-1977. Now, like I say, maybe you could uh, send us a, you know, a, a comment or something and tell us who you are. And then there's Anthony Avalon and Michael Bosiga. Now, these guys really are important to us. First off, our idea of the board right from the beginning worked out really well. Look, we've covered the whole board. I mean, this is really important to us. This helps us a lot, believe me. And, uh, you know, we're just hoping that it grows. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really fun looking at things. We sit here and have tea and coffee and look at that board and just think of the names that we recognize a lot because they've been with us a long, long time. You know, Ray Theron, you know, like Paul Koch, Mark Palmer. So we can't really thank them enough. But right now, I have to get back to work on this. This is our last piece to screw down. So I'm anxious to put the holes in it and fasten it down. Well, I've got the spacer in there now. And uh, I think when you drill it, you'll be able to see or hear the drill actually drop through that space because instantaneously it becomes easy and then it becomes a little bit dip more difficult or more pressure required. But these two screws right here are the ones that pull the butt end of the scarf together real tight. You know, they're on more of an angle than the inclined plane of the scarf is. So it's pulling in that direction. You know, there's a little technique involved here, and it's an important one. I'm drilling the first hole straight up and down. You know, I've got more room to hit there, and it's easy. And one of the things that's a little difficult, and you could mess up, is 
you know, trying to drill those holes down into the in whale because you want to leave the plugs back a little bit, you know, not on the edge, and you have to hit that three quarter inch uh, in whale, and it's on an angle. So you have to look at that angle as you line in your drill up because if you don't, you're going to come out the side or, or something wrong is going to happen. So, you know, careful here, the straight up and down ones, you know, that's easy. Doing something like this, you got white oak here. You know, it's pretty tenacious, really. And uh, one thing I can recommend to you is that after you drill a hole, if you see the bit like full of stuff, don't clean it out of there with your finger because that thing is hot. I can get down to the surface of the wood with the countersink, but you know, if I drove it in there and then pulled it back out, uh, it wouldn't be good because I'd have to go down in there again to make the depth. And you know, I could scrub the side of the hole really easily. So when you plug it, you end up with a big dark glue line around the plug. You know, I hit the surface a little bit and then bury it. I'm gonna take a chisel here, a scraper, a chisel, anything. I'm gonna scrape that little excess off the plank right there, a the little fuzz, because the, the drill left it and it takes up space. It's easier to get it down nice and tight if you take these things off. You don't always have that opportunity when you've got things together first and then drilling it, but here I do. It's time to apply the polysulfide. Before I do that, I noticed there was a little tiny gap under the cap and I decided I would adjust, you know, the shear and the in a little tiny bit right there. And so it's good. Now I am applying the polysulfide and I do it kind of right out of the tube. There's no need to spread it. If you start spreading it, you're going to have it everywhere. The stuff jumps. I go slow enough so I'm not having problems and it goes off slow enough so I can take my time if I want. The other thing is, is when you're doing this, it's much easier to push the tip along you can, you're kind of spreading it at the same time. It just works fantastic. You get a much neater bead, you know, and it takes less time. You know, one of the things you don't want to do is get this stuff all over your hands. You have to be careful, you know. And if you wear gloves, you're going to have it everywhere because you can't feel it. As soon as you get it on the gloves, you're going to get it on everything that you have. So, you know, be careful with it and just do it like this. I'm going to mix some Total Boat high performance epoxy here. And I'm going to use the pump on the hardener, you know, because you have to stop right at that line. I'm not using the amount of pumps of the hardener, like calibrating it like that. I'm just pumping it up to the line. It's very, very easy. You can stop any way you want. And then I'm going to pour in the resin after that. Now, you know, I just pour it right out of the large container. And I've always done it that way because I don't want to pour some into another thing and pour out of that. Mr. Wizard did that one, huh? <laughs> I'm going to mix this stuff up really good. You can't mix it too much. I'm applying the first coat to each surface. You know, it's unthinned and unthickened is what it is. And, uh, you know, it's like a primer, really. Once I get a layer of raw epoxy on both of the surfaces, then I'm going to thicken some uh, resin and then apply that to the one on the boat. Not both of them because I think it would be just a little bit too much and I'd have glue coming out everywhere where I, when I clamp it. So, you know, this is good enough. One side with the thickened, you know, it's pretty simple to, I, idea is to make contact and squeeze the glue into the pieces of wood. That's what gets the uh, adhesion. Well, this is the acid test of all these systems right here. We're actually gonna do it right now. The first two screws are gonna be the ones that I drilled on an angle. And uh, I have a clamp there, but it's not tight at all. All it is is holding that thing down into a little bit of curve. And uh, when I apply those screws, you're going to see that clamp actually get loose and almost fall off because it's not holding anything. Like I said, that space that was between it when I drilled it, that space is still there right now. So when that screw gets tight, you're going to see this thing slide aft, you know, on its scarf and become very, very tight at the end. I 
like that. That's nice and tight. All right, well, here we go. This is the last piece right here. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of glad it was a lot of work, really, this whole boat. And uh, I tried to do a nice job on it because I don't want to go real fast and make a mess. I just don't do those things. Now, there's technique and methods to do all of this stuff. Even putting a screw in. It's like I like to hold the screw on the end of the bit and then put it in the hole because if I put the screw down in the hole, it may not be the right angle anyhow. So I have to put my angle on the bit, the same angle that the drill is, and then as I go down, I have to keep correcting it. You know, you have to stop anyhow, or you should stop unless you're convinced that it's going exactly right. Because you can feel the thing clicking like, you know, it's bouncing up and down in the slot. And that's why people have so much trouble with straight slot screws. Straight slot screws, you can apply more torque than any other kind of screw, and uh, they're easier to get out because you can clean the slots and all that kind of stuff. You know, these square drive and all these other ones, you can't get them back out. They fill up and forget it. Now that's the last screw right there. All right, now I'm clamping the scarf right up here because, you know, I couldn't use a screw here unless I left it on the surface. It would look terrible. So what I'm doing is clamping the glue up. When it dries, I'll take the clamps off and drill a few holes. It won't matter if they go through this layer because it's so glued down. You don't rely on the screws to hold it just to get it there. Now I have to run around the edge of the boat here and plane the edge of the cap because it was kind of crudely cut, but I knew I was going to cut it back. So, you know, most people would probably figure they could do it with a router and maybe you can, but I don't like the sound of the router, you know. So I do it with a rabbit plane or a shoulder plane and, uh, you know, it comes out really nice and smooth and everything else and I don't have to listen to the router. Now to plane that like that, you probably have to come from two different directions because one direction you're planing into the grain and uh, you know, can hardly plane it. The other way you're planing kind of with it and uh, it helps out like nothing. Then you can hear the plane, you know, and it takes more material. You know, it's just the way you have to do it. Now this right here is the scarf that you saw us do last. And uh, you know, it came out pretty nice when I did it. It actually came out fairly level, but they're not level and I'm going to make sure that it is. I'm going to plane it right out. I don't need to use an electric plane because it's not sticking up like one of them was, you know, and I don't need to really struggle with it with a little tiny block plane or anything like that. And uh, I have to keep in mind when I'm using a longer plane that if I set it down this way, you know, there's a curved surface under it. It doesn't set real well like that. You have to turn it like this. Well, you don't want it straight across because then you could make it, you know, curve like this. So you put it kind of diagonal like that. You still have the same problem. Look at the plane, it rocks back and forth, you see? Because it's touching on this edge and it's touching over here. So the center is right down there that way. That's where it's rocking on that kind of a center right there. You know, now if I had it this way, you know, it would be even worse, especially up there. So I don't want it this way either. I have to do it like that. You gotta have the blade out far enough so that it cuts. And, uh, you know, if you can make a stroke this way, all right, but let's go. Now it's just starting to finish up. I made it here, a little bit more over there, and then we'll take a look and see how it fits. Now there it is, and it's exactly what I wanted, nice and tight. It looked like there was a little space in the middle here because this piece was a touch rounded over, but one more stroke and that'll go away. It'll be as tight as this all the way across. Yeah, that's right. Now look at it. Part of it's me, but part of it is the system that I used. And, uh, you know, it's exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to look like that. I didn't want it to look stupid, you know, and uh, it looks great. I'm going to close my eyes and see if I can find it. I, I can't, you know, so that's how good it is. 
Well, that's the last of the construction of this skiff, actually, right there. Now, I'm telling you, it makes me really happy. This was a dream that I had at one point. About eight years ago, I had made a model of this boat, and I'd been looking at it for eight years. I finally had the opportunity to build it. And uh, this was what every fisherman used to ask me about right here, if I could build a V-bottom skiff. Well, this is a V-bottom skiff. You know, our next things, like I say, is to get it finished. We're going to plug the holes. You know, there's a way to do everything. I'm going to do it my way. And, uh, you know, whether that suits everybody, I don't know. But I've always done it this way. It's not just like you take a plug and bang it in there. You know, there's a few methods that I go about doing and how I clip them off and everything. It's really something everybody should know. Because, you know, I made mistakes doing that for years. And uh, now it's really relatively easy. And... Uh, you know, it's actually fun to see it covered up, and uh, when they're sanded out, you know, you stand here, you can hardly see the plug holes, and uh, yeah, it just makes it look pretty.